This is absolutely massive. Jordan Henderson is going to Saudi Arabia. It's been confirmed tonight with a 12 million pound fee agreed between both clubs, El Etifak and of course Liverpool. Uh, in this video, I'm going to break down what the transfer means for both Jordan Henderson, Liverpool and of course the emergence of Saudi Arabian football because this is a coup. This is absolutely huge for them and uh, he'll obviously be joining uh, his former teammate uh, Steven Gerrard. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. Let's just talk about what we know about the deal. He's been offered a massive £700,000 a week. Now, currently at Liverpool, he's on two hundred grand a week, which, you know, he's not a beggar, is he? He's on a massive contract already at Liverpool, but to kind of, everything's got scale, everything's got proportion, 200000 turn that into 700000 that's a free X. You offer any person a 3x multiple on their salary at the back end of his prime. I mean, he's 33 years old. He's going to take it. He's going to take it. Um, this is obviously a massive move for Liverpool as well. Let's just talk about Jordan Henderson's legacy at Liverpool. This is my perception of it. I think he'll go down as one of the most important players to ever play for Liverpool. Certainly in the modern era. Is he as technically gifted as Kenny Dangleish, Steven Gerrard, Luis Suarez? No, of course he isn't. But the way he applied himself in midfield was incredible. It's as simple as that. His work rate, his energy, his fitness levels. Even to say he was barely injured. He was always fit and available. And then he led Liverpool on to win their first league title as captain. First league title in 31 years. Champions League winner. Club World Cup. FA Cup. League Cup. He's one of the Liverpool greats. And he was adopted as a kind of, you know, uh, Geordie or, you know, kid from Sunderland. Came to Liverpool. They wanted to get rid of, rid of him desperately in the first couple of years. Didn't quite work. Obviously, Fulham came in with an offer and stuff like that. And that's why football's so great. Because a player's career is never over until it's over. It really isn't. And Jordan Henderson, you could have said, was a, an average, an, a young but average midfielder in the Premier League. And he came and that little 5% of quality of belief that he had himself, uh, Jurgen Klopp turned him into, you know, a massive captain, a massive leader, and someone that wasn't just a, a passenger. You know, I know a lot of people will say that he passed it side to side and that his work rate was his ability. No, he was a fantastic passer of the ball. He obviously scored a few goals in his time as well. Uh, there's no question about it. Some long range efforts. Um, but obviously defensively as well. He's so good in the challenge. Um, so robust. He's one of the most important players for England as well. Helped England get to the semi-final of the World Cup. The Euros final, obviously less involved. Um, it'll be a massive deal for him because I think he'll want to play in the Euro 2024 for, for England. But looking at Bellingham, Rice, even Calvin Phillips, I think he probably realises even if he stayed at Liverpool, he might have been sort of uh, fourth or fifth choice in Gareth Southgate's uh, picking. Even though I still think he would have gone uh, based on his ability. There's no question about it. That makes a dent in the in the situation for him, but that's only a small factor because he's getting paid seven hundred grand a week in England. Bear in mind, if you get seven hundred grand a week, it's tax free in Saudi Arabia. Yes, we get yes we getting paid one point three million pounds a week. So that's that's the reality of the salary that he's on. It's not a joke. It is transformative kind of money, and that is just the situation. Now he's going to Saudi Arabia. This league isn't a joke. I said in some videos that it was a bit of a retirement community and. Maybe it'll be Ronaldo playing against Benzema, playing against one or two others. And the, the amount of players they've got there, you know, the Neveses of the world, the Kantes, Brozovic is there, uh, Milinkovic Savic is there. It's mental. It's absolutely crazy. And Jordan Henderson goes over as an England icon. And that's why it's massive for Saudi Arabia. Whatever you say about England, if you want, we haven't won anything since 66, an England export going to LA Galaxy like David Beckham did, uh, Michael Owen and Beckham going to Real Madrid, um, uh, even Bellingham going to Dortmund, it created a storm. English footballers are massively important in the cultural iconography of football. There's no question about it. So if Jordan Henderson goes to Saudi Arabia, it's all well and good having Benzema from France, of course, and then Ronaldo, Portugal. Having someone that kind of represents the Premier League standard, which he certainly is, uh, the gold standard of Premier League performers, the gold standard of Champions League performers. He goes there and he raises the profile in a whole different kind of way. Uh, you know, look at Jose Mourinho, look at Guardiola. They want to come to England to prove themselves. And you have to have a taste of the English flavour 
when you're, you know, in these in these new leagues, you do have to have a little bit of it. And Jordan Henderson is kind of the big, the first big English talent to join Saudi Arabia. Uh, obviously, after Steven Gerrard in the managerial kind of position, and both of them obviously will be playing and managed um, at El Etifak. Crazy. Um, Liverpool. This is where it's interesting for me. They'll get twelve million pounds in the deal. They'll get forty for Fabinho, another player going to Saudi Arabia. Suddenly they've recouped 52 million for some of their best performers past their prime. I mean, the Saudi Arabian League is like a giant kind of great leveling out. I mean, all these players are not quite needed in the right way, uh, especially long term. You could argue for Fabinho and Jordan Henderson, long term aren't needed by Liverpool because of their age. So Saudi Arabia offering new contracts, getting these players out, it's almost like it feels a little bit like the kind of bacteria, the, uh, you know, the bacteria that lives on a, a giant elephant or whatever. It's kind of cleaning up the elephant without it knowing it. I think, you know, I think the Saudi Arabian League is kind of cleaning up some of the deadwood big salaries in the Premier League and, and making way for younger players, more exciting players to come through. And it's kind of moving the league along a little bit more. Uh, that's just how I see it. I mean, um, Liverpool will now go into next season with a whole new midfield. It's Dominic Sabozlai, McAllister, um, and then, of course... Um, you know, no Jordan Henderson, no Fabinho. Um, Liverpool will be a force next season, though. I still believe that. Uh, I think Jurgen Klopp, when he gets the kind of backing that he needs, I think he's already identified Sabozai as an absolute talent. I think he's an absolute steal. Um, of course, I think McAllister is fantastic. McAllister is almost a younger version of Jordan Henderson. I think he does all the same things that Henderson does. I think he has a little bit more quality in his passing range than Henderson. That's just my that's my opinion, anyway. So Liverpool already next season have got this kind of revolution going on, and if if City are flat-footed, Arsenal flat-footed, Liverpool next season will be a major force. They've got the best manager pound for pound in the world. Uh, look, what, look, I mean Jordan Henderson. Whatever you say about him is testament to you. He's Jurgen Klopp. Southgate reaped the benefits of Henderson's ability, especially in the 2018 World Cup. He was fantastic. Because of Jurgen Klopp's coaching, because of he put his, his arm around uh, uh, Jordan Henderson and making him a captain, making him a leader. So it's absolutely massive for Liverpool next season. that They've got rid of some deadwood, £42 million. Can they go and invest that again? Surely the ownership, FSG, are looking at it thinking we've got 42 million in for players that we might not have expected to let go. Henderson, two years left on his deal. Right, 42 million comes in. Let's add 50 million on top. Let's go out and get a 100 million pound player. Look at Arsenal getting Declan Rice. Can we go out? Maybe we get Calvin Phillips and someone else. And suddenly the squad, you look at Canarse, Van Dijk, Allison, McAllister, Diaz, Jota, Nunes, and Salah, Trent tucking into midfield. Liverpool are a major, major force next season. I really do, I really do believe it. Um, just to round up, I'm very keen to see what you think in the comments down below. Jordan Henderson on 700 grand a week. I'm just going to say, I met him once, very nice guy. You know, I'm shouting him out on the channel. Look, maybe I deserve 1% of his salary for a week just to sort of, you know, I, maybe I deserve that for backing him for so many years. I'm just shouting out Jordan and Henderson, that's all I'm saying. Um, but it's a massive salary, let's be completely real. Um, and it's swinging a lot of players' heads. Of course, minor disappointment or major disappointment, however you look at it, in, in terms of you know the campaigns that he supports, rainbow laces as well. That would be an issue that might have been a massive sticking point for him. And the money has, unfortunately, uh, if you look at it in a certain way, uh, has talked. That's just the reality of football and the reality of the market. Can you see what you think in the comments down below? And obviously, make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel.